Hello and welcome to our very first of our constellations of the week. And so when you look in the module overview for every module towards the bottom, you will see a constellation of the week and what we are looking at in the sky. And we always like to start off the quarter looking at Ursa Major. And so that's the constellation that for the week that you will see in module one. So as you go down to the bottom of module one, you'll see this star chart. So you'll see a star chart for every module and it will represent a different constellation. And so these are all from the International Astronomical Union. That is what this IAU at the bottom stands for. And they're also the same type of constellation drawings that you will see in Sky and Telescope magazine. But from the IAU, they are free for us to use in the class. What's interesting about these star maps is it will show not only the names of uh, bright na naked eye stars, um, but it will also show, for example, these two little red disks up here happen to be two little galaxies. Um, there's one over here. And so you can see some deep sky objects in the sky as well. So what's interesting about Ursa Major is that most of you know part of Ursa, Ursa Major, but you may not recognize the entire constellation. So a constellation is a boundary. It's an area. It's like a, a celestial neighborhood. So everything that's within this white boundary belongs to the constellation Ursa Major. Right? The, the character here with the green lines is just the stick drawing for that the kind of the major um, character or animal or thing that's associated with the name. So the International Astronomical Union has 88 official constellations. It's the way scientists can refer to constellations in an agreed manner all around the world. Every country, every culture has its own mythology in the stars and those are all preserved. But when we're talking one astronomer to another, we can all agree that this whole space is Ursa Major. And Ursa Major is the big bear. So here is her long tail and then her back. Her shoulders are here and her nose is way out here. And then she has front legs and then two long back legs. And when you look at her in the sky, she is a huge constellation. She takes up a tremendous amount of the sky. What most people are familiar with is the asterism, the, the Big Dipper. So an asterism is a piece of one or multiple constellations that also forms a picture in the sky. So here is the handle of the Big Dipper here, and here is the cup of the Big Dipper. So. The Big Dipper is the asterism inside Ursa Major, the Big Bear. So we're going to use Stellarium Web frequently within this class, and so let's go take a look at how to use that now. All right, you can go to Stellarium Web by going to stellarium-web.org, and this is something similar to what will show up. So what Stellarium likes to do as a default is it tries to figure out where your computer is and put you in that location. So down here at the bottom you'll see that it thinks that I'm in University Place, Washington. If I click on that tag for University Place, Washington, it will pop up exactly where it thinks I am. This can be based on my cell tower, it could be based on an address I have stored in the computer, it could be based on the server, um, that I'm running on, if I'm running on the college server, for example, it could sh push me off someplace else completely. All I have to do to change this location is I can grab the, I'm trying to do this with one hand, grab the dot and move it over to a different location. And so wherever I end up putting myself, so I'm going to go put myself right in the middle of Fort Lewis just as an example. And then once I have that place, then I can just say use that location. I can also zoom out on the map and decide that I want to go look in some other part. I might want to go over here and look around uh, Mount Rainier or Mount, Ra Mount St. Helens, for example, or I could go off to Denver or something else. But I'm going to go ahead and go back here and I'm just going to decide to go over to Joint Base Lewis McCord. So let's use that location. All right, so the new location will show up here. And the other thing is I changing your date and your time. So if I come to the opposite corner, so the lower right hand corner, I can click on this and it will open up the date and the time. So this is the play key. 
if I click the play key, time will start running in real time. And then, so it would do that. And so you can see the seconds start to change. A lot of times when I'm working in Stellarium though, I want time to hold still. So I'm going to pause time so things aren't moving on me so that I know that this is what the sky is going to look like at 10 o'clock on the night that I made the recording, which happened to be the day before zero week for spring quarter. So this is the night sky I see here. The other interesting thing about this bar is it helps me plan when the darkest times of night will be. So this is the darkest time of night based on the earth and the sun. It has nothing to do with light pollution in my neighborhood or clouds or rain or anything else. It's just going to tell me when the sun is not going to be interfering with my night sky. So I have daytime. I've got daytime over here. I'm into civil twilight, astronomical twilight. So the darkest part of my night is really going to be closer to 1 o'clock. But I'm not going to stay up that late. So I'm going to see what I can see around 10. So once I get everything um, set up that way, so I can go forward in time and backwards in time, just by changing the arrows so I could jump up a month in April and things would change. There we go. There's February. Now we're in March. Now we're in April. It doesn't seem to like April. I'm not going to worry about it. There's April. Okay, so let's go back to March. So I can change my times that way. All right, so now we know how to change dates and times. Um, let's go back to Stell Stellarium so I can just click somewhere else. So I'm going to have this artificial horizon. This isn't a real horizon for where I am. I can take away the horizon by clicking on this little landscape key and make it all go away. But I find that it, I like having the horizon as a landmark because then I can talk about things being so far above the horizon. One thing that is really nice though is I can turn off all of the clouds and I can turn off the atmosphere so then I can make it seem like it's the darkest time of my night sky. And if I take away the atmosphere, the light from the sun isn't bouncing around. And so if you go down to where this little clouds in the sun are, if I turn that off, then the sky gets very, very dark. And things that are obscured because of the light of the sun still bouncing around the atmosphere pop out, like this part of the Milky Way right here. All right. So you can turn them on and turn them off either way you want. All right. The other thing that helps when um, using Stellarium Web is you have the constellation lines and you have the constellation art. So let's turn on the constellation lines. Oh, wait, before we do that, just so that we don't um, kind of ruin things, the other thing to notice is that we have our cardinal uh, degree markers here. So here's north and east. And so if I want to move around, I can grab the, the landscape right here and I can click and drag and turn it around. So now I'm looking due east, so I, I should see things rising here. And then if I keep going, I can go and look due south. And so if I click and go left or right, it will turn me left or right. If I push it up or down, that is your your face versus or the level of your chin to the horizon. So I am level face, level chin, and if I pull down, it's the same as looking up. So I can look all the way up and I could look all the way down too if I wanted to and it kind of gives me a peek of what's below uh, my horizon. Okay, so let's go back over here to the north and talk a little bit about Ursa Major. So I'm going to look up a little bit here. All right, so one of the things that's nice about that asterism of the Big Dipper is it does make finding Ursa Major just a little bit easier, especially if you're viewing in the city. And I've looked at those constellations enough that I can spot the Big Dipper right now. It's these three stars for the handle. And then here is the Dipper, which means this is her shoulders and her nose, her front legs and her back legs here. So I can come down here and turn on the constellation and there's Ursa Major. So we can see the constellation of Ursa Major right here all the other constellations that are around her, including if she's the big bear, Ursa Minor has to be the minor bear or the baby bear. And so they're across from each other. And then I can turn on the art 
and I can see the artwork that's involved. And so this is um, some pretty old artwork from old um, stellar atlases. Okay. So here we have Ursa Major, and one of the th reasons why we like to start with Ursa Major is because it helps us find Polaris, and Polaris is our North Star. And so we have our we have our North Horizon here. Let me just get things turned a little bit. That looks good. Okay, just like that. And so one of the ways that we find Polaris, which is this star right here, and if I click on it, it will give me the star name underneath the star and then to the left up in the upper left hand corner it will give me some information about Polaris. Now Polaris itself isn't a very bright star. It's not the brightest star we have in the night sky. It's not even in the top 10 brightest stars. Um, so that's kind of a misconception. Everyone thinks that Polaris is going to be a big big giant bright star and easy to see and it's not. So the way you find the North Star to help you find North is by using the asterism of the Big Dipper. So I go and I find the Dipper part of the Big Dipper and I take the two stars here that are furthest away from the handle. And if I take those two stars, right, and if water were in this Dipper it would be pouring this way, right? If I follow the direction that the water would be poured and I keep this straight line and I go five lengths from this star to this star and continue that five times one, two, three, four, five, I land on Polaris. And so that becomes the handle of the Little Dipper or Ursa Minor. All right, so that's how we find Polaris the North Star from Ursa Major. All right. So some of the other things that you can find when using Stellarium on the web is other objects that are up to sea. So at the same time at night, the Venus, the planet, is going to be heading down, chasing the sun. So this is, would be in the west, so th this is setting. The moon is a crescent moon, and so it's right there. I have all of my big winter constellations in the south, just because of the time I happen to make, be making this. Um, and then what's really lovely, if you happen to be watching this for spring quarter of 2020, if I let time go, let's get the time back up, right? And so we could just let time go right now and it would start just kind of ticking away. But I can speed things up a bit. Oops. ticking the minute hand so I can get things to creep along. I can also use the up hour button and I can make things jump by hour. So what we're going to see rising in the east here pretty soon are some planets, some really big bright lovely planets. And here they come. So I'm going to move everyone over so it's a little bit easier to see. So we're going to end up with Mars, Jupiter, and Saturn all lined up here in just a second. So if you happen to get up really early, um, the first day of, let's get the sun down a little bit so we can see those better. So here we have Jupiter and we have Mars and we have Saturn right next to it. So they look like three really large bright stars off to the southeast but those are actually planets. Alright so enough of that we have now used Stellarium to help us find Ursa Major and now she's over here because we moved time forward. So go outside and try doing that on your own and we'll talk to you in about a week as we talk about our next constellation.